Before we get started here, if you love true crime and don't want to miss upcoming videos from True Crime Insanity, then click the subscribe button. Subscribing helps the channel grow, which in turn helps me continue releasing these insane stories. Thanks, and let's get started. Kalinka Bambersky was born in 1967 in Casablanca, Morocco to parents Andre and Danielle. In 1974, the family moved back to France, and this is where Danielle began an affair with their neighbor, a cardiologist named Dr. Dieter Kronbach, who worked at the German consulate with friends in very high places. He was also married with children, and his first wife had died suddenly in the 1970s after he gave her some type of injection. He was investigated for the death, but no charges were filed. Danielle and Dieter left their spouses in 1975 and married each other in 1977 and settled in Lindau, Germany. Andre, a successful accountant, remained in France with Kalika and her brother. Kalinka's summers were spent with her mother and stepfather in Germany. In July of 1982, 14-year-old Kalinka and her brother Nicholas were in Germany at their mother's house when tragedy struck. Kalinka had spent the day windsurfing on Lake Constance before returning home around 5 p.m., tired and complaining that she didn't feel well. The family sat down to dinner at 7.30, and afterwards Kalinka headed off to bed. Around 10 p.m., she got up, got herself a glass of water, and headed back to her bedroom, where according to Dieter, she read until he asked her to turn off the light, which was around midnight. The following morning, Dieter, dressed for his morning horseback ride, came downstairs and proceeded to wake Kalika. But it was of no use. Kalika was found lying in her bed, on her right side, deceased. After receiving the news, Andre instantly became shocked and confused about how his happy and healthy teenage daughter had suddenly and mysteriously died. Initially, Dieter was arrested and charged with her death, but released due to insufficient evidence. When Dr. Yopst arrived at the scene, Dieter told him that at around 7.30 p.m. the previous evening, he had injected Kalika with a mysterious compound, which he would not name, but he said it was to help her tan easier. He also said he gave her an iron and cobalt injection to treat anemia. This was strange, though, because Kalika didn't actually suffer from anemia. He said that at around midnight, he gave her a pill because she was having trouble sleeping and closed her door. He said when he found her unconscious, he injected her with dopamine in an attempt to wake her up. In 1988, six years later, a French investigation discovered that the cobalt-iron combination was the likely cause of her death, causing asphyxia and cardiovascular shock. Andre claimed it was clear from the beginning that Dieter was being protected by the authorities. He argued the forensic pathologist who conducted the autopsy initially refused to take additional tissue samples from Kalika's body to get a precise report. Amazingly, the doctors concluded there was no foul play. They couldn't determine her cause of death, but so-called experts suggested that Kalika had died from heart failure after suffering a heat stroke from windsurfing the previous day. Despite these suspicious findings, Dieter was never formally interviewed. It was even said that Dieter was allowed to attend Kalika's autopsy, but the German authorities maintained that he remained outside the room. Andre devoted his life to pursuing Dieter and demanded that a second autopsy be carried out. Around three years after Kalika's death, Andre finally received a copy of his daughter's autopsy report and learned the gruesome details. However, by this time, the case had already been long closed. His interpretation of the report told him that his daughter had been drugged, sexually assaulted, and then murdered, and her killer was allowed to go free. 
The autopsy found that Kalika's sexual assault was brutal to say the least, and she was found with several injection marks on her arms, legs, and throat. There was also DNA found on her private area that was never analyzed. When her body was finally exhumed, it was discovered that her genitals had been removed and have never been seen again, ruling out the possibility of testing the DNA. Professor Spann of the Munich Forensic Institute reviewed the autopsy report and cast some serious doubt on Dieter's testimony and concluded that the iron and cobalt injection had been administered much later than he originally claimed and instead was way closer to her death. Her undigested stomach contents pointed to a death soon after dinner, and the aspirated stomach contents in the lungs pointed to her death being during coma or anesthesia. The expert concluded that the timeline given by Dieter was not accurate at all, and it was more likely that an injection right after dinner had caused the circulatory failure, unconsciousness, vomiting, and her ultimate death. Meanwhile, Danielle believed that Andre's persistence in the case was due to him being jealous of her marriage to Dieter, and she simply thought he just wanted revenge. When authorities refused to reopen the case, Andre traveled to Germany to deliver leaflets to Dieter's neighbors, letting them know what kind of man he really was. He labeled him a criminal doctor and added his name, address, and details of what he had done to Kalika. Dieter fought back with a defamation lawsuit and won damages of 500,000 German marks, which Andre refused to pay. This amount is equivalent to around 274,000 US dollars. Danielle and Dieter would eventually divorce in 1989 after she found out he had been drugging her to have an affair with a younger woman in their home while she was sleeping in the next room. After years of campaigning, a breakthrough came when Andre discovered that Kalika's French nationality meant a new trial could exist in France instead of Germany. In 1995, a French court decided there was enough evidence to try Dieter, but Germany refused to extradite him, stating that the case had been closed in 1987 and German citizens could not be extradited. Even with Dieter's absence, he was found guilty of manslaughter and sentenced to 15 years in prison. Still, German authorities refused to hand him over, and the European Court of Human Rights later quashed the conviction, ruling Dieter had been denied a fair hearing. Andre wasn't giving up and continued his pursuit of justice by hiring private detectives to track down Dieter. In 1997, Dieter was convicted of drugging and sexually assaulting a 16-year-old female patient in his office. He was fired from his job, but only received a two-year suspended sentence. Meanwhile, five other victims of his came forward, including two sisters who claimed he gave them iron injections before being sexually assaulted. However, the cases were not pursued due to lack of physical evidence. Andre was furious, but refused to give up his fight for justice. Andre continued to have private detectives track his daughter's killer even after he moved and changed his phone number. Despite having his medical license revoked, Dieter was found to be illegally practicing medicine in 2006. He was arrested, convicted, and served about a year in prison before being released. This happened after he was identified by a librarian whose local general practitioner had recently hired him as a fill-in doctor. It turned out that since 1997, Dieter had been traveling around Germany as a temporary doctor, picking up substitute shifts on his old license. Upon his return, he was found with a suitcase full of money and a penis pump. In larger pump. That's not mine. During this time, he was continuing to sexually assault patients. 
After 27 years of failed attempts to bring Dieter to justice, Andre finally decided it was time to take matters into his own hands, sensing his window closing as France had a 30-year limit on legal procedures. Andre distributed ads asking for help to get his daughter's killer to France to face the courts and was contacted by Kosovan-born vigilante barman by the name of Anton. Anton refused to take his usual payment because he had daughters of his own and just wanted to help Andre get justice for Kalika. Anton recruited two other men who had ties to the Russian mafia. The two men kidnapped Dieter from his home in Bavaria, Germany and brought him across the border to Malouze, France. They bound and gagged him and dumped him on the pavement outside the courthouse early on October 18, 2009. They then notified the French police of the address where they could apprehend a notorious fugitive. When they arrived, they found Dieter gagged and bleeding on the pavement. After being untied by the Malou's police, he demanded to be set free. He claimed that he was suffering a heart attack and was a cardiologist. <laughs> Man, you are one pathetic loser. <laughs> by then, however, he had confirmed his identity and thus his status as a wanted man, and under French law, he was arrested. The following day, acting on call tracing information from a mobile phone company, the police went to a hotel in Malouze and arrested Andre on kidnapping charges. It turned out that he had called the police, masking his voice with a Russian accent. The kidnappers were also caught and arrested. Anton was sentenced to one year in prison but was held a hero by Andre. Andre was captured but was quickly released on bail. Germany once again tried to protect a sexual abuser, demanding that Dieter be returned and Andre and the abductors be extradited to Germany. How about new? Thankfully, France refused and instead charged Dieter with Kalika's murder. Anton said he would have killed Dieter if Kalinka was his child, but Andre wanted to go through the right channels of justice. Dieter was ultimately found guilty of deliberate violence leading to involuntary death and was sentenced to 15 years in prison. Andre was convicted in 2014 for ordering the kidnapping and stood trial in France for his part in the abduction. He confessed and said that he had been morally bound to abduct Dieter. In the end, he received a one-year suspended jail sentence, and the prosecutor even praised him for his courage and perseverance. In February 2020, Dieter was released from prison near Paris on medical grounds after only serving nine years and died in a nursing home seven months later at the old age of 84.